Coming up, the World of Outlaws late model schedule is out, and could it be tempting enough to draw a major contender away from Lucas? We'll talk about that, plus Kyle Larson gets an offseason win, more driver news and weekend results. Let's go. It's Sunday, November 17th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. Back on Friday, we got our first look at a 2024 schedule for a major dirt racing touring series with the World of Outlaws Late Models releasing their slate for next season. They've got 54 races across 33 racetracks running from January through November. A bunch of new stops are on it, uh, including uh, Thunder Hill Raceway in Tennessee. You've got Arrowhead, Raceway 7, Bedford Fairgrounds, Path Valley, the renamed Ultimate Motorsports Park here in North Carolina, Independence, Hamilton County, Norman County, Wilmot, Highland, Spoon River, uh, Makokeda, uh, Rome, Boot Hill, and Rocket Raceway Park. A lot of familiar races return on here as well, including the two Volusia weekends to start the year, the Illini 100, the USA Nationals, the Prairie Dirt Classic, and of course, the season-ending World Finals. That one weekend that stands out to me, though, is the Gopher 50 at Deer Creek in Minnesota. This was previously an outlaw show, but it flipped to Lucas in 2022 and 2023, becoming a nice payday on that schedule. But for 2024, it's back to being an outlaw race and a nice little coup for series director Steve Francis. That three-race weekend will end in a 50,000-to-win feature on Saturday, July 6th. As is always the case with schedules, you can't make everybody happy, but it looked like the reactions were pretty positive for this release. Now we'll see what Lucas does here in response. A year ago, the Lucas schedule was already out by this point, and then their big chase announcement came at the PRI show. We're still about two and a half weeks from PRI, but Lucas could have their schedule out any day here. With the outlaw schedule now out, we'll also wait on more full-time driver decisions. These could obviously come very late in the game. We didn't know eventual series champion Bobby Pierce was going outlaw racing until he pulled into Volusia after the Wild West shootout in January. In the category, though, of things that make you go, hmm, was an interesting social media post from one of the top guys in 2023. Not long after the Outlaws put their schedule out, Ricky Thornton Jr. shared the link to the Outlaw schedule on his Facebook page. And there are a lot of comments on his post with people wondering if it could be a clue as to what his plans are for next season. RTJ had a dominant year out with Lucas, but didn't end up with the championship because of bad luck during the one, uh, one race winner take all chase finale at Eldora. Lucas' playoff format provided a very compelling finish to the season, but has been heavily criticized by a lot of the fan base for robbing a driver like RTJ of the title. The pushback from the Chase defenders has been that the teams and the drivers knew what they were signing up for, and they were compensated well in the final playoffs, uh, but the uh, detractors uh, do have a case here, I think. I did hear at World Finals a few weeks ago that RTJ and his team hadn't made a decision yet for a national tour, and that the Outlaws were seriously being considered. Thornton hasn't made a ton of outlaw starts in recent years with only 44 appearances going back through 2019. He does have four outlaw wins in that span, including this past year's Prairie Dirt Classic and the final two shows of the year at Charlotte. If for some reason Steve Francis is able to convince Thornton to flip from Lucas to the outlaws, it would be a massive get for that side. And it could set up what would be a very entertaining outlaw title fight next season. And depending on how things go with the Lucas schedule, RTJ could still potentially run something like probably half their shows in addition to his Outlaw commitment. Definitely a story to keep an eye on here going forward. Also on the Outlaw late model side, we did have a bit of a surprise on Saturday with regular big block modified competitor Max McLaughlin announcing he'll go full time next season in a dirt late model driving for GR Smith. He'll run for the Outlaw Rookie of the Year with backing from his current car owner in Al Hankey. McLaughlin has been just uh, or has made just one late model uh, outlaw start on his resume. That was an eighth place finish at Orange County Fair in 2021. That was driving a car for Boom Briggs. He had four modified victories in 2023, including the opener at Dirt Car Nationals in Volusia. If things can stay together all season with the often volatile GR Smith, this could be a solid career move for McLaughlin. Drop me a comment. Let me know your thoughts on all of this dirt late model news that seems to just keep on coming. On California, the Hangtown 100 last night was rained out. They are going to try again today to get that race in for the USAC Midgets. The Friday night show ended up going to Kyle Larson. It was Young Money's first USAC Midget win in two years, actually going back to the Placerville weekend in 2021. Larson only made three starts in all of 2022, and Friday at Placerville was his first midget appearance in 2023. In a race that went caution-free, Larson drove from six to the lead in just six laps, driving by early leader and pole sitter Logan Seavey on the high side. From there, he wasn't challenged again, even through heavy lap traffic. Seavey and Buddy Kofoid rounded out the night's podium. The Sunday forecast for the Placerville area looks much better, so hopefully they should be good to go. 
Behind the podium on Friday, Jade Avedisian went 12th to 4th to earn the Knights Hard Charger Award. I bring her up at this moment because earlier in the day Friday, she announced a new deal with Toyota Racing Development to continue her career going forward. With a new multi-year deal in place, Jade will make starts next season in the midget again for Keith Coons Motorsports, appearing with both the Extreme Outlaw Series and USAC. The way things are worded, though, it doesn't sound like uh, she's going to be going uh, either series uh, full-time uh, chasing another championship. She was obviously the Extreme Outlaw champion in 2023. Instead, the release just says midget, quote, races, and that she will run the complete Toyota GR Cup schedule. The GR Cup is a road racing series in the Toyota GR86 that is 14 rounds spread across seven race weekends and is run as a support series to the GT World Challenge. It's clear that Toyota has hopes of her going further in pavement racing, and this will be her first chance to participate in a serious paved championship while also getting some road course experience. I don't think that should come as a surprise to anyone who knows how the TRD program works. One other midget note for you, Chase McDermott has found a new ride for 2024. We already knew he'll run the uh, Trifecta Motorsports 7U at the Chili Bowl. But then after that, he'll run the full Extreme Outlaw schedule and select USAC National Midget Shows next year with Dave McDalby Motorsports. McDermott ran the previous two years with Mount Stout and ended the 2023 Extreme season fifth in the standings with six wins. On Saturday, I sent out a new edition of the Slider email newsletter with a fresh piece from Pat Sullivan talking about the formation of the Maverick Wing Sprint Series. If you don't remember, this is the series that's coming in 2024, formed by Kevin Newton and the Spikers, with plans on running winged 410 shows around Indiana. On Friday, they also announced a little Speed Week action, which they are calling the Maverick Mayhem Week. Four races, June 20th through the 23rd. They've got stops at Lincoln Park, Bloomington, Hobstadt, and Terre Haute. These shows will be co-sanctioned with the IRA Sprint Car Series. We're still waiting on a full 2024 schedule for this new series. You can see that slider piece from Pat over at dirttracker.com slash the slider. At Lancaster, uh, Lancaster Speedway last night, Ben Watkins was a $10,000 winner with the Carolina Clash and Ironman Series. Today, action moves over to Cherokee Speedway for the Blue Gray 100. Uh, that one is $20,000 to win. Cherokee show will include names like Chris Madden, Dalton Wilson, Trent Ivey, and plenty more. And at Duck River on Saturday, it was Tanner English picking up the $10,000 win in the Gobbler. He topped Spencer Hughes and Jaden Frame. In an interesting move, Joseph Joyner actually stayed home and ran the Southern All-Stars finale at Southern Raceway. He picked up that victory over Dalton Cook and Caleb Gay. Uh, that's it for the show today. Make sure to stop by DirtTracker.com to see the streaming schedule as you do have several options for racing to watch today. I hope you guys have a great Sunday out there. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.